Hi, in this short video I'm going to teach you how to make your own ozone generator using the corona discharge method. Now I've already pre-assembled a few parts but I'll explain to you how I did it. It's very 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 simple, very straightforward. It sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. Now the first thing that you're going to need is a transformer from a neon sign uh, or it's also known as a power supply for a neon sign. Now this is a neon sign. This is just a regular open sign that I got on Kijiji for about $30. You can find them online for pretty cheap. I took off the power supply. This is the power supply right here. It's made by DNF. It puts out approximately 6,000 volts. The minimum you want to do this is 3,000. The highest you want is 15,000, so this is perfect. It's got a little pull string for on and off, and this little button adjusts the, uh, the uh, intensity of it, I guess you could say. Now, it's plugged in already. If you're not too familiar with uh, electrical applications, I would recommend you do not plug it in before you start working on it. But uh, I'm stubborn, and I, sh I should probably be working with it not plugged in, but I'm too lazy to walk to the, to the other room. So, great example, I know. Uh, on the other end, there's two leads, two electrical leads. Very simple, very straightforward. But what you're going to want to do is uh, strip these if they're not if there's not enough wire exposed. But you, usually there is, you just gotta take it off the sign, it comes off the sign very easy. So, what you're gonna want next is you're gonna want a piece of glass, this is your insulator, it's gonna be in the middle, sandwiched in the middle. You're gonna want something just like this. You've probably seen ozone generators, uh, instructions to build ozone generators online using glass jars. I don't have glass jars that fit inside one another, but this will work just fine. Here I have, uh, a piece of slate. It doesn't really matter what you use for the bottom insulation. You can use plastic, you can use uh, glass, you can use whatever you want. And in this case I use slate. Uh, you're also going to want some 14 gauge wire, uh, primary wire, or maybe something a little bit thicker because uh, we are dealing with pretty high voltage. That's that right there. You're going to want some tape as well. I use Gorilla Tape, it's really strong wire cutters, or not wire cutters, uh, wire strippers, sorry. And you're also going to want some morettes to cover up the electrical connections that you're going to make. So first things first, this right here is the, is the bottom. This is the bottom pad that I put together. It looks complicated, but it's actually not. Basically what I did here is I just folded the tin foil into a square. See? And I took a piece of wire, stripped it on both ends, and all I did was I put the wire inside the tin foil and taped it down. Basically, just so the wire is making contact with the tin foil. That's all. And I taped it down to secure it in place. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down to the slate, just like that. And now you're half done. I'm going to take my piece of glass, a plate, and put him right on top, right there. You don't have to secure the plate down. And next, I did the exact same thing with this piece. You want to make sure these two pieces of, of uh, aluminum foil are pretty much the same size. I did the same thing with this piece, exact same thing with the wire here, the way I connected it. Again, I just stripped it on both ends, and I slid it into the foil. Made sure it's making contact and I taped it down to secure it in place because I don't, I don't want it to move. Now I put tape loops on the back here. And I'm just going to go ahead and tape that down to the plate. Right, just like that. Pretty easy. Now, all that's left to do is to connect the leads. Now, there is no positive and negative that you have to worry about. You just connect either one, like so. This guy here, the exact same thing. Ouch. Be careful, wire's sharp. Marat.
Now try not to let this wire touch this wire. Okay. Now we're going to turn it on and see what happens. See that? I'm going to try to zoom in for you one second. And that's it. That's how you make your own ozone generator. I can even turn the lights off to give you even a better look at that. Check that out. Now I could smell that. That is very, very strong. So I gotta unplug that. It's not good to breathe too much ozone. Now ozone is a very good killer of mold and bacteria. It's good for uh, cleaning all sorts of things, but you don't want to breathe too much of it. It's just not good for you. So thanks for watching my video, and I uh, hope you have fun building your own ozone generator. And I hope you have lots of use out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.